in 2023, we've been lucky to cruise on both Morella Discovery and Morella Explorer. Both ships are firm favourites with the Morella community, but both ships offer slightly different cruising experiences. And in this video, we'll highlight the differences between the two ships and we'll also give our view as to which was our favourite. So if you want to find out more, keep watching. So first off, we're only going to focus on the ships themselves and we're not going to focus on the itineraries. Both itineraries were in hot weather, so this does seem like a fair comparison. Now, both ships are of a similar age. Discovery was built in 1995 and went into Morella service, first of all, in 2017. Explorer was built in 1996 and went into first service with Morella in 2018. Both are stalwarts and new firm favourites of the Morella fleet. In fact, so much so that Morella decided to duplicate these offerings with the Discovery 2 ship and the Explorer 2 ship. Both ships are a comparable size. The Discovery is 69,000 tonnes with about 1,800 passengers spread over 11 decks. The Explorer is slightly bigger at 76,000 tonnes and has 1,900 passengers spread over 13 decks. Discovery was originally a Vision Class Royal Caribbean ship, the Splendour of the Seas, whereas Explorer was originally a Celebrity Century Class ship, Celebrity Galaxy. So let's take a look and explore the key aspects of these fine vessels. So first, let's take a look at cabins. And on both cruises, we sailed on an inside cabin selected by Morella so as to keep the cost as low as possible. Now, both cabins were of similar size, but if anything, the Explorer cabin gave the perception of being slightly larger. Both cabins had a fairly limited provision of power sockets, both EU and US, no UK sockets. Both cabins had a safe, although the safe on the Explorer cabin was quite hard to find. It was concealed behind a mirror. It was signed, you just didn't notice it. Both had small screen TVs and there was a fairly limited provision of basic TV channels to watch in both. Now a big plus for the cabin on the Explorer was the excellent bathroom. It was slightly larger than on Discovery. It also had an excellent walk-in shower with a screen. The shower pressures were also high on the Explorer and the water was really piping hot and it made for a really refreshing shower in the morning. Now contrast this with our experience on Discovery. One, it was a smaller bathroom, the shower had a dreaded shower curtain, and the water pressures were a bit hit and miss. Sometimes they were good, sometimes they weren't, and the water temperatures would fluctuate as you were showering, so not the best. Both cabins had adequate storage space and enough hanging space for the both of us. A nice feature about the cabins in the Explorer cabin was that the doors for the hanging space, well, you had to close them after you use them, and it kind of made the cabin just look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So overall, we felt that the cabin on the Explorer was slightly better. We're going to give Discovery two points, but we're going to give the cabin on Explorer four points. OK, then. So next, we're going to look at public spaces. And although both ships feature similar standards of decor, the public spaces are, in fact, very different. A really big plus for Discovery is its magnificent atrium. It really is the heart and soul of the ship. It's also used as a venue for entertainment, music and shows and things as well. It's spectacular. Now Explorer 2 does have an atrium, it's just a lot less functional and isn't used for a great deal. It's more of a place to pass through than a place to go to. Outdoor pool decks are comparable in our opinion. There is plenty of deck space and some lounger space, but both can get crowded on sea days. A really nice part of the Explorer is the Mediterranean bar and terrace at the aft of the ship. This is a great place just to sit, enjoy a drink and watch the world go by. It also provides shelter from the sun and also the rain if you're unlucky enough to get inclement weather. Now, although we're not smokers, we also felt that the smoking area at the rear of the Squid and Anchor pub was also an excellent area. It was sheltered, it was at the aft of the ship, and it gave a really, really great view. You could just sit, enjoy a drink. It's well ventilated, so you're not breathing in other people's smoke. It was a great spot just to sit and watch it all go by. Discovery, of course, does have the veranda sunbathing area at the aft of the ship. This is an adults-only area of the ship, and it really does lack the buzz and the vibe of the Mediterranean Terrace on the Explorer. Navigation and ease of finding your way around the ship is an area where Discovery leads, and the interactive ship maps that you'll find on all the foyers and landings are excellent and really do help you find your way around. On Explorer, there are interactive screens that replicate the TUI Navigate app, and you can, of course, find your way around the ship's plan from those, but it's less in your face and not as intuitive. 
both ships were sailing at full capacity, but a really nice feature of Explorer was that the public spaces felt a lot less crowded and you had more personal space as you moved around the ship. And we also felt that Discovery seemed to be showing its age more and looked a bit more tired in the public areas. So while Discovery excels with its magnificent atrium, Explorer counters by feeling more spacious and its excellent aft terraces where you can sit and enjoy a drink. Now it really is difficult to differentiate between the two ships in terms of public spaces, but the greater feeling of personal space and less being less crowded just nips it for us for the Explorer. So we're going to give Discovery three points and Explorer four. So our next topic is facilities. And the Discovery does have an amazing and gorgeous indoor pool area known as the Glass House. This was like a retreat and it was a great place just to sit and chill and read a book. And there's no real equivalent space on Explorer. Both ships feature outdoor jogging tracks and a netted sports court. Both also have a crazy golf course, although the course on the Discovery is slightly bigger. Discovery has a climbing wall too, although it was out of use on our cruise. There is also an escape room. Both ships use the screen by the outdoor pool as an evening and nighttime cinema. A real plus for Explorer is that it does have an indoor cinema which shows movies all through the day. And this is a real boon on inclement sea days. Now both ships have fairly modest gyms which offer both cardio and weights. Both also have spa facilities which offer a fairly broad range of treatments. Now in terms of facilities, neither of the two ships are comparable to some of their more modern contemporaries operated by other cruise lines. But the Royal Caribbean heritage of Discovery does, I think, show in its greater range of facilities. So in terms of scores, we're going to give Discovery 3 and Explorer 2. Our next category is dining. And prior to our first Morella cruise this year, we were a bit concerned reading some posts on social media saying that the standards of food had gone down on Morella cruises. Well, rest assured, we can tell you that on both cruises, the standard of food was excellent. So how are we going to differentiate between the two ships in this category? Well, the buffet on Discovery has a better layout and it just flows and works better. And we also really like that staff make sure that you wash your hands before you enter the buffet. On Explorer, there are hand sanitizing stations as you enter, but you haven't got the hand washing facilities that you've got on Discovery. The layout of the buffet on Explorer does work, but it's a little bit more of a free for all, to be honest. Main dining and speciality dining options pretty much the same and are equivalent on both ships. One thing about Morella is that they do try and mirror the foods in both the main dining room and the buffet, so you kind of know what you're getting. Waiter service on both ships was fantastic and the waiting staff are ever so friendly and can't do enough to help you. Both ships offer pseudo and inclusive speciality dining options too in the form of tapas, Italian food and pizza. Now these options just seem better organised on Explorer with separate and dedicated areas for Italian and pizza and tapas in the Mediterranean bar on Explorer. Whilst on Discovery, they kind of all mesh together as a glass house restaurant to the rear of the indoor pool. Now, snack shack options on the pool decks are really good on both ships. They give you burgers, chicken burgers, chicken wings, fish and chips, as well as salads, sandwiches, and of course, who can forget those tasty cookies? So is there anything to differentiate in the two dining standards on both ships? Well, actually, we felt that the standard and quality of the food on Explorer was a notch above that that we received on Discovery. It really, really was excellent. And there was no evidence whatsoever of Morella lowering their standards in terms of dining. In fact, we felt that the cruise on Explorer, the food was actually better than we'd had previously. And at the risk of sounding controversial, the standard of food was close to what we'd received on some more luxurious cruise lines previously as well. So in this category, we're going to score Discovery 3.5 and, and Explorer 4.5. So this next category is bars. Now you're not short of places to drink on either ship, and the different venues across the ships offer different sorts of experiences too. Both ships have a large pub-style area called the Squid and Anchor. On the Explorer, this is the main entertainment area on the ship and it packs every evening. There's always music, quizzes, other forms of entertainment. It's always full and is always a lot of fun. If you want a more sedate experience on Explorer, you can go to the Latitude 53 bar, the lounge, or you can go to the Mediterranean bar at the aft of the ship. And there you'll see pianists, soloists, guitarists, and it's generally a much more relaxed and soothing atmosphere to enjoy while you're having a drink. We also really like the Indigo Bar on Explorer. 
It provides a fantastic view across the front and the forward area of the ship. There's also a small nightclub area behind the bar in the evening and it comes to life with discos and silent discos and other activities and performances. It's actually quite vibrant late in the evening. If you want to drink on deck, obviously both ships have poolside bars too, but the Mediterranean Terrace Bar at the aft of the ship, as we've already said, is a particular favourite of ours. It's really peaceful and it's just glorious having your cocktail or looking out across the sea as you sail. Now the big difference on Discovery is its atrium as we've already said and in the atrium is the atrium bar which is fantastic and they use the atrium as an entertainment venue with live music and activities and you can also just sit in the atrium bar just taking it all in in this fantastic splendid surrounding. Discovery also has a sort of a crow's nest area with forward looking views out the front of the ship however this view is really restricted to those uh, passengers that are using the Coralar restaurant now the adjacent bar 11 is really pleasant, but you don't get those views that you would get in the Indigo Bar on Explorer. Now Discovery does have an amazing live music venue called the Live Room, and this hosts the more noisier performances of your cruise. This place is great and it has a really rocking atmosphere. It's the place you'd end up in most evenings and it's really, really good fun too. Now by contrast, the Squid and Anchor pub on Discovery have a much more sleepy and relaxed atmosphere than its counterpart on the Explorer. That was a quite a surprise to us. So scoring this is hard and is largely a personal choice. On Discovery, we've got to give a massive shout out to the live room. We really enjoyed that. But we do think that the range of venues on Explorer does give you a greater variety of evening experiences. And we did particularly warm to the Mediterranean Terrace Bar at the aft of the ship. So overall, we probably think in this category, Explorer nudges it again. So we're going to give Discovery three and we're going to give Explorer four. So this next category is entertainment. Now there is little to distinguish between the two ships in terms of entertainment. In fact, both cruises we were on had the same house band known as the Collective, although they did have different lead singers. The theatres though are different in layout and configuration, with the theatre on Discovery giving a more intimate feel as you watch the shows. Now both cruises provided excellent entertainment throughout the week. We witnessed some amazing Broadway shows, there were talented musicians and there were some really good comedy acts too. The entertainment teams on both ships work tirelessly to make sure everybody's having fun and this is a real strength of Morella. We couldn't differentiate between the two ships in terms of entertainment and we we're happy to give both five points. And in this next category we're going to talk about ship's atmosphere and another Morella strength is the friendliness and dedication of the staff. Can't fault them. They're kind and courteous and they're smiling and laughing everywhere you look. They're fantastic fun. This even extends to the two ships' captains, who were very visible around the ships on both cruises. The atmosphere on both cruise ships was relaxed and chilled. Rest to impress night saw many passengers dress up and tog up and look smart. Without some of the pomp and formality that you get on other cruise lines, it was really lovely. Nobody looked out of place and it felt really inclusive too. Now, despite the all-inclusive drinks package that you get on a Morella cruise, we saw no evidence of drunkenness or disorder. Everybody was having fun, everybody was polite, everybody seemed to be having a laugh. Now, this is another category where it's hard to differentiate between the two ships. However, the action in the live room on Discovery, I think, was pulsating, and it was an awesome place to be late in the evening. So, in this category, we're going to score Discovery 4.5 and, and Explorer 4. So, that's it two great holidays with Morella. We loved them both, but which of the two ships had the edge over the other and gave us the better cruise holiday experience? So here are the final scores, and the final scores are Morella Discovery 24 points and Morella Explorer 28.5 points. So for us, the Explorer is the winner. It has better inside cabins for starters, it felt less crowded, we thought there was a better range of music venues and the food was better. We'd happily say on both again, and Morella Cruising does cater for its predominantly British passengers. It's easy and it's comfy, and although we've sailed and loved other cruise lines too, we felt like being back on Explorer was, well, it was just like putting on your favourite pair of jeans. We loved it. Now, we hope you found this video useful, and if you did, maybe consider hitting the like button or even subscribing. That really would mean a lot to us. Myrtle too. So if you've got this far, you're probably thinking of booking and going on a Morella cruise. And if you are, we hope and we're pretty sure that you'll really enjoy it. Thanks for watching.